So this is gonna be a bit of a Q and A as well. I'm gonna ask you questions that I already know answers to. Okay. Like obviously, I'm, we're still gonna do my physio yeah, stuff yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah. my body is not feeling it right now. Okay. So I'm really nervy. Hi camera, can you see me? Hi, just check in. So I'm really nervy like here and it's been stuck since like Monday. It's great nervy. So when I'm doing my flossing, okay. oh my gosh, just the whole chain like here. All right. And it does, like it's way better actually. This morning it was horrible. But I think because I've actually worked through it and I was flossing quite a bit, okay. that it's kind of eased it. But just like along here, it just feels very blocked here. I've okay. tried to use a TheraBand to unblock it. Um, Are you feeling it more like you're gluing back when you're doing that? Or more down the heavy? Glute back. Yeah, glute and back like here. Yeah. A little bit at the top of the hammy, but not all the way down. Okay, cool. Pukwa. Yeah. Uh, just to know whether it's stemming more from like back top of glute, if it was more like just bypassing that all together and just heading into the hammy. Yeah. And I don't know whether it's because of like, I'm tight up here, but I've tried to like do the whole breathing exercise. Okay. How's that going? Up. I think this side is maybe a bit tight. Okay. This other side, I can't remember. All right. But anyway. Okay, cool. So that's been the main thing? Is that yeah, like the last recent? three days. Last few days? Yeah. Okay. So I think Sunday I was feeling it. All right. Um, what had you been doing? Like, uh, had you do been anything doing more jumping Sunday. or anything in particular? Like, anything that might have jammed like, the left side of your body? Huh. We did take off some Monday, but I feel like it was already hurting on Monday. Okay. So maybe on the week. No, I hadn't really done anything. That's okay. going to cause it. It's not like I'd done any box work or anything like that to okay. jam it. Alright, cool. But how's everything else then? All good? good? Yeah. That side? Um, this Achilles is a bit like, I've had a stiffness upon waking up in okay. the last few days, which is right. never fun. Yeah. Tuesday, this morning, I put a therabond around it and was kind of like doing that. Okay. To see if it's like blocked around the ankle or something. You've been staying on top of your feet? Yeah, yeah, rolled, okay. rolling, rolling underneath. Yeah. I was like, what do you, you mean by that? that? <laughs> I had to process that. <laughs> Computing. Alright. Um, Where do we start? Is the hip stopping you from doing anything or is it just like a... Um, it's, it's, it's really not, it's not nice. It's okay. really, like, I obviously not going to say painful, but really uncomfortable. Okay. So stopping me maybe from having like full range or full power okay. on that side, potentially. I don't know. Okay, cool. All right, face that way. You can talk um, it. Yeah. So we look at the hip. I enjoy this music, but can we turn it off? Because I'm scared that YouTube will then tell oh. me that I'm not allowed to have it on. <laughs> there you go. That's so annoying, even though it's going to ruin the ambiance. <laughs> <laughs> this guy treats in silence. <laughs> okay, yeah, bend forward. Do you feel anything there? Not as bad as like earlier this morning, but not bad this morning. Not as bad as this morning. Okay. Like I said, I think everything's kind of because I've moved through it. Okay. If you tuck your chin into your chest and then roll your upper body down, you don't have to bend all the way down. Do you feel anything referring down? At this point now, yeah, I can feel a tiny bit there. Yeah. Okay. Come back up. All right. Bring this knee up. Okay. This side. Is this a funny in? Okay, side bend for me. And side. How does that feel? Everything fine. Good. Does it look fine? Uh, yeah, left hips moving a little bit less than the right, but not like unusual for you. Yeah. Say, uh, sit on the edge. This is your favourite. Your uh, rotation. Oh. Yeah. Like this. Yeah. Start like that. Okay. Nice. Other side. <laughs> Okay, hands behind your neck, elbows back, twist. Okay, other side. There's right. definitely more, I can move more to the yeah, right, right. Yeah, what do you feel come left? I think it's just restricted along here, maybe. Okay. I don't really feel it. So you're not really feeling blocked anyway? No. Okay, hands across your shoulders, twist. Okay, other side. Yeah, definitely a bit more like thoracic -y. Okay, uh, lay on your back. Okay, cool. 
Right, so, I don't even know what I'm going to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> this is what, this is why I thought, oh, maybe it would be easier if I do it, I just record us doing something. Because in, even in my head I was like, how, what sort of questions and how would you demonstrate stuff, you know, like, when you're asking someone. What do we think's up, Doc? <laughs> I don't know yet. <laughs> oh, these are not the answers that you give. So what are you doing? Why don't you, just, why don't you just take us through like what's happening here? Okay, so because you're feeling a little bit of like nervy tightness um, in and around like the top of the glute, around this like, joint, like around that joint, I'm just having a look to see if there's anything that's moving like unusual for you or like um, or if you're struggling to recruit like through certain muscles and everything because sometimes like if you if you get that kind of like neural tightness generally there's some kind of like lack of movement from the joints around the hip mm. or some of your muscles are basically like tightened up and you're not recruiting them as well which doesn't give you like the same kind of stability in around that joint um so sometimes like today normally you're really really strong through your hip um and i can't move it whereas today like obviously we're resisting as well as normal mm. a bit like when you had zero rotation <laughs> that time do you remember yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> somehow <I> forgot <laughs> Yeah, definitely a little bit. Weaker. Yeah, a bit shut down through this side. I see that you have a preferred side, which means that this camera is uh, oh. just getting your beautiful <laughs> just, back yeah. all the time. <laughs> it's my ass in the face. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. I think I do prefer to work on this side though. On it's the just inside? Because it's, no, I, I think I do prefer working on this side of the table, oh. but it's because it was your left oh, side. Oh, okay. Right, I know. Why don't you just take us through your journey in this? Because you know what's funny? I remember when I first started working with you, I don't know, several years ago. Lift your leg up. Okay, drop it, this one. Oh, this one. Feels like tight around here, but that's normal, I think. Yeah, okay. Bend your knee, lift up. Start me pushing down, so push up into me with this. <laughs> yeah, that's not normal for you. Bend no. this one, lift up. Start me pushing down. Okay, yeah, that's good. All right. What were you gonna say? Just because I've seen the glow up <laughs> in your proficiency, not just as a massage therapist, but just as a general, like physiotherapist, actually. So, what would you say your titles are, and how? What's your journey been? Like, how did you get to be as good as you are right now? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, to be fair, I think a lot of it has just been being lucky enough to work around like the guys at BA. So I picked up a lot of skills and stuff from being around them. So obviously when I started out, qualified as a, essentially a sports massage therapist, but the course I did, um, we were trained up as sport therapists. So the, the person who runs the course ran a sport therapy degree at um, a uni down in London. What um, was the uni? Who was the person? Um, I think it was Uni of Bedford. And um, put me on the spot, I forgot the surname right now. Um, Tim Payne. Okay. Yeah. And he included a lot of the, well, basically the, the criteria that was in there. Uh, so we kind of got trained up as like a sport therapist would and trained to think along those lines, which mm -hmm. is a little bit different to just, oh, here's a tight muscle, just massage it kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, just being lucky to be around people like, you know, Cora, um, Derry, Gordon, George, John, all the guys who are essentially around and lucky enough to kind of pick up the skills and anytime I ask them a question, Gemma, is it, for example, with the breathing, mm. diaphragm, all of them, they've just been really helpful in terms of, um, and I like to learn, so probably just annoy all of them and end up not being liked, but <laughs> yeah, just harass them for, for questions a lot of the time. And I then, feel like you have a unique style of like di diagnostic style, right? Yeah. Where did you get that from? So I think every therapist has like a certain way in which they think about the body because there's so many different ways to work with the body um, and I guess for me a lot of it is like I've always had an interest in like muscular imbalances and you know your central nervous system and stuff and the link to muscle firing patterns um, and I think just personally when I used to uh, compete um, I always found I responded well to stuff like that so like if I could switch so if like one of my muscles just wasn't really engaging and then I managed to switch it on, I always found that I'd responded well to it. So I think it just naturally led me down that way a little bit more. Um, so then, you know, I'd look into something if I wanted an answer in it and then ended up doing like CPDs and stuff that 
relate a little bit more to it and here I am. Yeah, we're definitely going to get into you throwing because I know that Pushing definitely has contributed. And relax. To, um, like obviously you, Pushing. your work and relax. now. Yeah. But tell me about the CPDs. I know there's like a specific um, instructor or therapist that you've worked under that you told me about. That's why he works in throws or he's like a friend of a friend or... Oh, Zane's dad. Zane's dad. Yeah, <laughs> tell me about... Because that's... Yeah, I feel a, like that amazing. was what intrigued me because I remember you saying that you would take uh, maybe days that you, when he would come and you would just soak up under his cheese yeah. ridge. So share what that looks like. I mean, I love watching him work. I can't do what he does. But... Um, I'm really interested in what he does. He, he is setting up a course to um, teach his techniques. And I've done, he's shown me like the basic stuff, which I've implemented more so in like more chronic type problems. But he trained as a craniosacral therapist and like acupressurist. And um, he essentially does a lot of work with like the central nervous system. So like if you have things which are really like essentially chronic stuff, but he does like, you know, like if you had this, he'd spend some time on you and you'd probably feel better. and. He just works in a very different way. It's very gentle touch. It's very, like, it looks like he's not doing a lot, but you see huge, like, physical changes on the people that he works on. Um, yeah, and he's he's setting up, like, a, a course, essentially, called, I think it's, like, New Horizon Therapy. I might be wrong. But, um, uh, yeah, he's, he's just a very interesting, like, amazing therapist. He was, like, a mechanical engineer oh. before he requalified. And um, he kind of takes that brain and that approach to like working with the body. So he's like, um, you know, uh, muscles move joints, nerves move muscles. So mm. he always likes to start with the, the nervous system. He's like, that's like your electrical wiring in the building and stuff. So if something's not wired right, then you know it's going to have an impact further down the line and everything. So how yeah. would that apply to like what I've come in with today with this? nervy complaint have you kind of looked at the diagnostics through that lens of that little mantra that you just used <laughs> yeah a little bit so you're in your case because you said it was nervy and you were getting some like no like positive nerve symptoms when you did your slump test where you straightened your leg and you could feel it in the same kind of place to me that's like okay there's obviously either like you're getting some pinching in the nerve in and around the glute because the muscles are tight around here or um, it could be stemming more from where the actual nerve root is in the back. Mm. So that led me more into doing tests, like just seeing how you're moving through the joints, seeing if there's anything obvious in the way the joint's moving, um, seeing like how your side bending is. Because we've done, we've worked together for a while, I know what your normal is now. Mm. So like I can see like, oh, okay, if you're not bending well this way or you're not engaging well through here, it tells me like, it's easier to do that than like say if you're brand new or whatever i'd still have the same approach but at least i know what is normal for you and then what isn't yeah i think it's so important to have a baseline like people we all i think we obviously we go to the doctors when we're poorly we go to physios when something's out of whack but it's so powerful to just have hey this is what i'm i'm like when i'm healthy yeah. or this is what i'm like when i'm at my optimum so that you can we know what to return back to so yeah, I find that I found that really helpful. Yeah. You know, especially like the testing, for example, with the hamstring strength and knowing I'll, I've got like the R and size for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. How is that going, by the way? <laughs> uh, no, honestly, training has been decent this last few days. You know, so going back to the cranial skeletal, is that what you call it? <laughs> the cranial sacral. Yeah. Cranial sacral. Can you explain what that means? Obviously, cranial are referring to like brain or yeah. So sacral. it's a lot of it's to work with yeah your cranium like basically your skull and everything around your head and then the sacrum which is like essentially where your tailbone is mm. and it's to do with like the flow of like cerebral spinal fluid up and down that and all the like connection from a nervous point of a central nervous system point of view and all of your net your nerves stem from your head and then they go down your spinal cord and then they branch off to all the relevant like muscles and organs and all that kind of stuff so they tend to look at the relationship between your head and your sacrum and along your spine um um so like i said a lot it's 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 hard to kind of explain as to how it works 
um, for me. Here it's been a lot better, but um, yeah, it's kind of hard to explain how it works. And again, it's one of these ones which is difficult to kind of get quantifiable um, measurements from, but like it's one of those ones which where it's undeniable in terms of how like effective it is, like the amount of people I've seen in retreat and they just come back in, you know, completely like the issues have just kind of gone. Um, it, it, it's, 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 it's very, very impressive stuff. Mm. What other Wish. CPDs have been as impactful? Bend your leg, lift up, so you push it down this way. That's a lot better. It is, it's engaging. That's more normal. Then you're back. CPD. Um, well, I did obviously my dry knee limb, which you know, a lot of athletes hate. enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they might hate it, but they say it's very beneficial. Oh so my gosh, yeah. I don't particularly enjoy being needled. I don't mind doing it, mm -hmm. but I don't particularly enjoy being needled. So that was a stressful weekend, but it was, <laughs> oh, worth, yeah. it was worthwhile. Oh my gosh, yeah. share the story of the stressful <laughs> so, dry needling course weekend. <laughs> Yeah, it was very sweaty, nervous sweats, <laughs> full of nervous sweats all weekend and anxiety, but yeah, we got through. <laughs> oh my gosh. But yeah, it was good. It was good. Like, there were, there were people who were way more like anxious around needles than I was. And, and that showed. And it showed, yeah. <laughs> Tell me how. Tell us how. Share the story. They won't know it's like you're talking about them. We were uh, learning how to needle the lat, and the teacher decided to use me as the example on that particular muscle. Um, and he struggled to get the needle in because apparently I've got thick skin, like literally. Um, oh, you really so, do have thick skin? Yeah, apparently, yeah. I didn't know that until he was experimenting with these needles and <laughs> couldn't get them in. So it didn't help when he's like, right, I need the bigger one. Can someone get me a bigger one, please? <laughs> <laughs> I was expecting him to bring like a hammer and an axe and like, yeah, and a chisel. He's like, this will be your needle for the day. And then um, we got through it and I was like, oh, okay, it's fine. And then we went off into our groups and started practicing and then one person literally like screamed like he'd been stabbed like in, <laughs> in the stomach or something it was literally like a gut-wrenching scream <laughs> and then I looked over the instructor was over there holding his hand and like calming him down as he was hyperventilating and like nothing happened to him they just the person who was with did nothing wrong they just did what we were asked to do but because it was quite a, a sensitive area I think it like triggered something deep within him and then, then that was him done. Like, <laughs> Off the course? Well, he, he, he just watched the rest oh. of the weekend. Yeah, he didn't do any, he didn't take part in anything. Like, he, like, he did the needling himself, but he didn't get Yeah, needled. not for the faint heart hearted. Not for the faint -hearted. Yeah. I remember Rough. back in the day when I used to dry needle myself. I know, loads of people did that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, Things that, um, like, we, you gotta do what you gotta do, hey? I mean, there's some essential, like, bits of knowledge which you should know about like <laughs> yeah. instead of just doing it like don't needle anywhere near your lungs oh yeah oh like, absolutely not no yeah and make sure you're clean or, like put it into like a clean surface yes absolutely like, um this relax push in okay relax push in okay relax yeah but, um, that was a good that was a good course Another one, obviously like taping we use a lot, K-tape. Um, I used this one called Chapman's Reflexes, which is like a muscle activation. Of course, that was really helpful. I use it a lot as like um, to help diagnose like muscle imbalances. And it's quite helpful for finding out like, oh, if we like stimulate a muscle, will it remove the symptoms? And if it does, then I know which areas to kind of work on to help kind of rebalance stuff. So yeah, that's an interesting one. Um, Have you used any of that today? Uh, not as a diagnostic. Um, no, I haven't had to. I've, I've, used it, I've used it with you a lot in yeah. the past. Yeah. Especially with like the diaphragm stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mobs are good. Like, you know, like the minutes. Yeah. Um, did you have to do a CPD for that or did you do that as part of your That was actually part of the, the, the training. Yeah. yeah. We learned mobs rather than minutes. Um, so like, you know, sometimes if I've worked on your ankle and like, mm. I'll basically just move, move it around the place. Like. Oh, for those who don't know, what's the difference between like mobilization and mani manips or manipulations? And manipulation is like a high velocity um, movement where you try to get the joint to move. Mm. Um, so if it's stuck, you basically like push it in, at a high speed to try and pull it back into where we normally sit. Um, and that takes more training because it's 
obviously you can cause more damage through that if done wrongly. Um, and a mow is, is a more gentle um, approach to it where you take a joint to a position and then you essentially just gently move it in that position until like it regains its normal like, movement, which is a much safer, like easier way to do than the minute. And do you ever like support athletes to figure out how to do that themselves in some instances? Yeah, like if there's stuff, like a lot of the stuff I'll do if I'm testing, I'll do it with something that you can do yourself. And then if you responded well, then say this is something you can like incorporate into your warm ups or anything. A bit like your breathing, for example. Mm -hmm. or, oh, would you call that a, a mob? No, I wouldn't call that a mob, just a technique. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. The mobs. Like I the mean, fair run stuff that I mentioned fair stuff, like with, with my ankle, ankle. Yeah. yeah, something like that, for example. Um, yeah. This is horrible in the hair, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, it feels. Why? So I think from whatever you've done, you probably don't know, or you don't know, but whatever you've done, I think you just basically like jarred this, your hip joint on this side, mm. um, and all the muscles around it just seized up a little bit. Do you know what, on Friday, did we have testing? Just uh, bounding testing. Okay. And probably because... You're putting that bit more effort. Yeah, yeah and that makes sense. yeah, that makes a lot of sense now. Tell us about your throwing. <laughs> yeah, so I used to be, I was doing bobsleigh for a bit and then I had to stop. Basically, I couldn't commit to the time um, around family life and stuff. And then needed something else to do and someone suggested I do throwing. So that's where I met. Um, I decided to just give it a go, looked at the training. It was kind of similar to bobsleigh physically in the sense it's a lot of like speed and strength and power. A little bit more on like the strength and um, side of the spectrum and then met Zane and I think he just took pity on me and was <laughs> like yeah I'll, help. <laughs> I'll give you a try and then yeah from then on just got into it and it was fun for the first six months when everything was like new and you know it was going well and then it's just been like a constant battle of like a love-hate relationship with the sport because it's easily the most difficult sport I've ever done to like be good at to learn technically from yeah, it's, I've never done anything like it. I it's totally like, get the love-hate relationship. <laughs> you must, right? <laughs> <laughs> what's been the love? What's been the hate for you? Um, I guess the love, I don't know, really. It's, um, still waiting for that moment <laughs> where I do a really good throw and think, oh, okay, it was all worth it. But no, it's, I like the training for it. I do like the training for it. And because it's like, it's, it's a huge challenge like, mm. to learn the skill. It's really difficult. Um, so there's that, so that is the love and the hate. It's, it's really hard. Like it's nice to have any challenge, but it's also very, very like, it's, it's taught me a lot about patience. Mm. Yeah. Taught you a lot, about, a lot patience. about patience, that is true. <laughs> you have like a virtual setup though, don't you? Because Zane is based in Doha. Doha. Yeah, his sister does most of the coaching now though, like in person. Um, so this is a moat, by the way. But they can't see it. That's a moat, by the way. I'll take your foot <laughs> first met and then I'll take it to a position and end range and then I'll just move it until we get more movement mm -hmm. rather than just taking it and like doing like an aggressive thrust mm. push and stop pushing oh that's way better yeah that's better grab the table stop me pulling this way keep your legs down stop me pulling this way that's a lot better isn't it oh god I can still feel a tiny bit of nerviness in the okay. back though this one okay Jeez. so annoying it's like Really uncomfortable. That nerviness. Yeah. If I take your leg like this. Uh, yeah, I can feel it, yeah. That's helping. Okay. Oh, I guess that's a flossing. Should I have a minute? My head got full. Uh, no, it's okay. I know. Yeah. Eee. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, so his sister, Shaz, she is taking on a lot of the athletes that he was coaching her, and she's, yeah, she's just great. She's as good as him. Um, and then he still oversees a lot of the stuff, uh, so we'll just send him like videos every now and then, and he'll give his input and stuff um, into it. But he virtually coaches, um, you know, some of the good guys like Lawrence and Dan and Kirsty. Lawrence oh, Okoye, Dan Greaves, Dan Greaves, Kirsty Law, Jade Lally. Um, yeah, wow, Kirsty Law, yeah. Jade Lally, like the these media. are big names, and they're all based in the different media parts of the as world well. as well. Sorry, the media. As well. Oh, he coached the media as well. I didn't know yeah. that. Shot put. His name was a very good shot putter when he was younger. Uh, 
Yeah, he was very good. He was like one of the, yeah, the best we had in the, the country for his age group and right. all that kind of stuff. And then, um, yeah, he still competes himself in discus. That's yeah. weight there, that's better in terms of the pain. Okay, good. And then resist this way. Or oh, discomfort, I should say. Okay. Alright, do some of the breathing for me as well. Right, let me check. What are you doing? I'm doing some of that Chapman's reflexive stuff. So what I'm doing here is I'm trying to get you to engage your diaphragm to see if it makes any changes on um, what you're feeling through the glute. Just because the diaphragm connects into your hip flexors, to your QL and the lower back. Um, and if any of those are like, compromised, it can affect like, essentially your hip function. And I know that you've responded well to this in the past too, so I want to see you. How did you find the nose breathing? I feel like I'm going to go to sleep. <laughs> okay. I'll wake you up, grab the table, both arms. Stop me putting you that way. Keep the legs down. Yeah, stop putting you that way. Okay, good, that's better. Mm -hmm. Okay, push out. That's more like you. Yeah. yeah. That's normal. Yeah. Push out that way. Okay. Strong! Let me test this as well. Keep it against you, so I'm going this way. Yeah, that's more like, is it? Yeah. You might feel good. uncomfortable here, but you're actually resisting. Yeah, no, it doesn't feel uncomfortable there okay. anymore. Good. Uh, retest your rotation first. Okay. Mm. Okay, arms across your shoulders. And then twist. Okay, other side. Okay, twist left again. Okay, hands behind your neck. Elbows back to me. Twist. Okay, other side. Okay, and left. Alright. Feeling a bit jammed here still? Yeah. Okay, lay on your back. Ah, oh, jeez. Okay, keep your arm there and mm -hmm. stop me lifting this way just to resist. Mm. I think that was quite good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very good. Solid, <laughs> solid as a rock. This one. Yeah, that's a lot better. Okay, so clearly the other one was not that good. Was there any discomfort in this? Or was it just like difficult? It's just weak. Just weak. Okay. Yeah, like it. Okay. What's the best part about your job? Um, well, when it works. Yeah, if it makes a difference, I quite like, well, I like that. If mm. I can help someone, it's a nice feeling. Mm -hmm. Um, which is kind of why I got into it. I've had, I had some good experiences with therapists in the past. Um, every case is different, so you've got to use your brain a little bit, but you actually get, like when it goes well, you, get, you do get like job satisfaction from it. Mm. Um, it's nice working with people as well. Um, yeah, the last job I did wasn't really, you didn't really have that kind of same sense of like, you get direct feedback on, on how you've done. Oh yeah, because what the when you what remind me of your original degree that you studied? I did earth sciences. Earth so that, sciences, yeah. yes. <laughs> Very geeky. <laughs> geology, geography, that kind of thing. And you worked abroad on different sites as well. And the what? Different sites. Oh different sites. Yeah. 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 Worked. Um, on landfill sites <laughs> a lot of the time. <laughs> in that was in the UK, and then did worked on some mining sites. Like I spent ten months in the Congo working on a copper mine. I remember you saying that. Yeah. Yeah, not digging out like copper and stuff, but yeah, supervising construction and that kind of thing. You've had a very eclectic career. Yeah. I feel maybe that's why you connect well with Zane's dad as well, and the work that he does because yeah. it kind of mirrors your own transition that's a good like point you're both actually, very yeah. clever and see things in just different abstract ways that's a good point both came from like a science engineering background mm. and yeah both did a lot of sport too he was um martial artist no way yeah 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 he used to compete in, um i think it was the start of karate where mm. he'd go and like fight and stuff and she i think that's why he how he got into the therapy thing he had like an old basically fighting injury mm with his ribs and he saw someone who does work like what he does um, and they basically got rid of this pain that he had had for, for years 
and stuff. So that was like his inspiration. Yeah, his <laughs> light bulb moment. Like, yeah, oh my goodness, why are there not more people like you in yeah. this world? <laughs> okay, keep that there. It's open this way. Resist. Okay, it's getting there. It's not good enough. With that being weak, what does that test? What does that show? So that was looking at, so when I was getting you to rotate the various ways where you put your arms, so like when your arms were up front, that was looking more at your lats. So I was looking at all the stuff that affects your rotation mm -hmm. from the upper body up. Um, across your shoulders is more uh, like lower trappy and then behind your neck kind of singles out more like mid thoracic. Mm -hmm. um, and when you wear hands behind your neck, mid thoracic, Kind of area you were much more restrictive in movement mm -hmm. it was much more obvious and then mm -hmm. this is testing a little bit of like mid thoracic strength um to see like if you're struggling there and then so i'm just going to do a bit to loosen this off and then see if it helps with your rotation and then because it's like it's possible as well that this so your left shoulder lat so your right shoulder lat connects into your opposite Definitely, glute. Definitely, yeah. And when you struggle, I remember briefly from the past when you were struggling with rotation to the one side, your opposite hip was getting affected. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's a little bit of that. Yeah, so I did try to roll my back this morning and it did feel it like, but would I then need to roll the side as well? Yeah. Would that be more helpful to remember to do that as well? It would be as helpful, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. I will do yeah. both. Yeah. It's funny because my warm-up just gets longer and longer. <laughs> then he's like, <laughs> it's just like, why are you not ready yet? I'm just like, I'm 33 years old with just an accumulation of different ailments. <laughs> so I need to make sure that every body part is warmed up, is loosened up, just do my best to make sure I'm coming, yeah, everything's firing it in is, sequence. You, just need to, you can't take any risks. Yeah, I literally right? can't take any chances. <laughs> I was joking that I was saying to but Kat today. But you've improved a lot, like. Oh my you know, goodness, loads, loads night and, and day. Progress and, um, yeah, where you used to be. Yeah. I'm very thankful for the team that made that happen. Well, that's horrible. Ugh. Okay, with pressure? Mm hmm. Ignore my faces. Okay. I don't know if it gets too unbearable. Okay. I think. What were you saying to Kat? Oh, I was saying, like, she was mentioning how much she squatted on her back. And I was saying how, because if I, I'm more prone to my back pinching now with heavy weight on my back. So it's either a weight belt or if I don't have the weight belt there. And even when I do have the weight belt, it's kind of like we're going to limit the weight that we put on my back because it's just not worth it. The, yeah. return, the return is not worth me potentially missing out on two yeah, weeks yeah. of training it well, my body yeah. returns to normal just because it's decided that it wants to um i don't know break under the load a little bit yeah whereas before yeah. i was comfortable having put 200 plus on my back now it's kind of like okay we're going to leave it at two times two and a half times max body weight <laughs> be great <laughs> i'm gonna hold here and i just want you to just take it on and just reach across like okay. that Oh, do you know what I've just remembered as well? I was speaking with Aston today at the end of the session and my shoulder was really tight, like around the front as well. Oh, was it? Yeah, and okay. I was like, oh, what is that? And then reach up towards, yeah. So this is all making sense. That's good. See, this is the beauty of physio slash therapy in, in general with a good therapist. They connect the dots. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, at the start of the session, it's like, oh, I don't know how that happened. I don't know why this is blocked. <laughs> By the end of it. You never have a clue, do you? By having the conversation, <laughs> we're kind of like, oh, yeah, so I did testing, bounding testing Friday. Yeah, probably yeah, extra said, exertion. So did you do any, like, high impact stuff? No. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because Maximum normally it's to do with... Bounding. <laughs> you know, like, super high impact things. Like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, got a few PBs as well in that. I did <laughs> So the being jacked up has been worthwhile. <laughs> jacked up. <laughs> We're just constantly pushing our bodies to yeah. the edge. Push. That's what I was gonna say. Strong. That's better. Okay. Proud of me. One. 
Am I proud? I'm proud of me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need you to be proud of me. I'm proud of you. Yes, I'm very you, proud. When you make the changes, I'm just very proud of myself <laughs> for adapting, for the yeah. quick adaptation. So, yeah, when it comes to adaptation, what's the easiest changes one can make? Like, so what? Um, what is the question that I want to ask? I guess I want to ask two questions. One is around, like, the best warm-up. What things should an athlete put in their warm-up from a massage slash physiotherapist point of view? Especially one who maybe doesn't have access to a physio like trackside physiotherapy. And yeah. secondly, I've forgotten the second question, so like the first question is just valid. Um, I like basically just getting the muscles and the movement that you're about to do, get your muscles as prepared for that as possible. So I like a lot of like for me personally, any movement through that range that I start off with slow movements and a lot of like isometric holds, so like a lot of long holds. Um where it's long, actually how many move. seconds? So it depends on the things I do, sometimes 30 to 45 seconds. If it's a smaller muscle, which harder, which is harder to hold that time, I do like 10 sets of three second efforts. Mm. Um, so it'd be like if you were getting you to engage your hip flexors, I'd get you to bend your knee, push into your opposite hand, and you hold there for like, so you'd be like that. Yeah, yeah oh yeah, like I keep getting to do time. that. That's really helpful. Sometimes I do one with a ball around here and just like, yeah, that's yeah good. for the adductors. And it's just like a good way of connecting your mind to the muscle. Thank you for that reminder. And stuff. Um, or like, you know, like if you go into a, a glute bridge or a, yeah. something and squeeze at the top. and um, Yeah, and then just basically trying to feel like everything's just engaged, getting a lot of blood flow to the muscles, getting your muscles to feel like they're awake, essentially, mm -hmm. like switched on. For me, it's like, um, yeah, the best way to kind of go about it. Don't skip on like a thorough warm-up. Yeah. As well. <laughs> Do not skip on a thorough warm-up. Yeah, that especially is. the more you are into like, the strength, speed, power end of the spectrum, mm. the more important that is. Mm. Um, try and get your muscles as elastic as possible and mm. as loose as possible, not in like a like a static stretch necessary kind of way, but in a way that like everything's just on and feeling strong. Mm. Um, if you're doing something more like a low effort, it's not, you know, that that can be your warm-up into it. Like if you're gonna go for a jog, like the jog could be the warm-up mm. and stuff. Um, set on the edge and twist again, I want to check. Hands behind your neck, yeah, and then twist. Pretty good. Other side. I think it's freed yeah. off the other side. I love when you do work on one side; it also frees off the other side. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's good. Lay on your back. I just see if it wants. Yeah, yeah. Lay on your back, and then just hug yourself. And then relax. Just let yourself go heavy. I'm not going to try and force anything. stand up, actually sit there, and then retest your slump test. I mean, it's like, wait, it's better, but I can still, mm -hmm, to be fair, yeah, it's a lot better. That's probably like 20% is still there, just, okay. and not, it's just located around the lower back. Okay. Just, yeah, over there. Where abs? Yeah. Like, where you pointed to? Yeah, there. Okay, so glute. Oh, yeah, glue, yeah. Laying your side facing that way. I'm going to do one last thing. If I had thought about this properly, I would have had two cameras set up. I see. So one there and one that side. <laughs> you okay with that? Yeah. What's like okay. one... Retest this now. One thing for every athlete, every speed, power, strength athlete should know? The one thing. Yeah. <laughs> Such a you tell me question. your one. <laughs> <laughs> no, from a massage therapist's point of view. Just be in tune of like your body and stuff and know when you think something's not right. Um, and then retest the slump. I think that's a really good response considering yeah. it was such a crap question. <laughs> yeah, we are 10% left. Oh, to be fair, we're, yeah, we're, I feel like I can live with that. Okay, and do one last thing, lay on your back. And then put that leg over that one. So cross that. Ooh, yeah, so you it. know the drill. <laughs> and knee about up from here. And then just let yourself go heavy. Okay, twist back. Twist. What do you call this one when I'm resisted against you? Twist. Um, 
a muscle energy technique. So it's just like, this is another way to kind of get a mob. If we engage muscles under resistance in a certain position, it can help like engage muscles around the joint, which can help the joint loosen off if it's restricted or tight. Just retest the slump after that. Is that the same? Yeah. Okay. All right, well, we'll see how it gets on anyways. Yeah, I think like it's settled. Yeah, I think because it's been nervy for the past three or four days. Yeah, and stuff. But yeah, you definitely were like a bit restricted in glute, hip, um, hip flexor, lower back, uh, that whole area. Uh, you weren't too trigger pointed in around the glute itself, a little mm. bit in the lower back, but I think it will settle down anyways in the next couple of days. Cool, thank you. Stuff. So do, do the flossing, that'll probably help it a bit more now. Um, mm. And do your breathing. And I'll also start yeah, doing some stuff rolling out on this side now. Yeah. Yeah. One more to add to the warm up list. Yeah. <laughs> so exciting. <laughs> so, thank you so much for joining this really haphazard <laughs> channel, YouTube slash Define Your Success podcast, and we'll see how it goes. Ciao. Say bye to your fans. <laughs>